Welcome back. And we are here to talk about CMMC 2.0. So last week, the DOD announced CMMC 2.0 by accidentally publishing the announcement to the Federal Register. Now, that left a lot of us kind of hanging in the air, wondering what was going on. And at 9 a.m. Pacific time, they released their new site with a lot of new guidance and honestly created as many questions as they answered. Now, what I want to do here is I want to go through what has changed between CMMC 1.2 and 2.0. For convenience sake, we're going to call it 1.0. Um, and what that means for the defense industrial base. So first off, I want us to go back through the stack of how we got to CMMC to begin with. So FAR came about in 1979 as an attempt to streamline government acquisitions. Part of the FAR is a set of mandatory clauses that every contract must contain, and that includes 15 safeguarding requirements for federal contract information. Now, every cabinet level agency and department buys things differently, and they can create their own supplements to the FAR. For the DOD, this is DFARS, which came about in 2010. It is important to know that DFARS adds on to the FAR and does not replace it. All of these requirements stack. However, on December 21st, DFARS Clause 7012 went into effect. This required compliance with NIST 800-171 in order to protect controlled and classified information. Now, the problem with this is that there's no certifying body, and the government just trusts that contractors are doing the right thing and actually implementing these controls. Now, contractors show their compliance with a system security plan and a plan of action and milestones. The system security plan says what you do. The POM says what you will do. Now, the problem with this is that nobody was really doing it. They built their SSPs and POMs in order to meet DFARS 7012 and then didn't update them. So this opens them up to issues with the False Claims Act. In 2019, the DOJ obtained over $3 billion in False Claims Act settlements including an $8.6 million settlement with Cisco for undisclosed security vulnerabilities. So it obviously wasn't working. After a bunch of industry discussions, the first draft of CMMC was made public in 2019, with version one of the document being published January 2020. Now, on November 30th, DFARS Supplement 7021 went into effect, which set out a timeline for CMMC to be rolled out. So for the first time, security was going to require a third-party assessment. Now, part of DFARS 7021 was that immediately all defense contractors needed to do a self-assessment against NIST 800 and submit it to the DOD Supplier Performance Risk System, SPURS. Additionally, it spelled out the time frame for CMMC and the five constituent levels. This would require third-party certifications from C3PAOs, certified third-party assessment organizations. They weren't going to take chances. Now, last week, CMMC 2.0 came around, and now we have three levels. They've gotten rid of levels two and levels four, and sometimes it will require a third-party certification. And POEMs are back. So what does that mean? Let's actually take a look at the broad sweeping changes between CMMC 1.0 to 2.0, and we'll go into where the questions are lying here. So first off, the goal of level one and two in CMMC 1.0 was to protect federal contract information. Now, level two, I think, was doomed to begin with. 72 controls, two processes, and it didn't give you any additional benefit to winning contracts because you were protecting FCI with level one. It was considered a transitional level, moving into level three to protect CUI. So the DOD killed it and left FCI, federal contract information, totally under the foundational level one of CMMC 2.0 with 17 controls that are encapsulated in the federal acquisition regulation. Interesting to note, if you've looked at CMMC level one and you've looked at the FAR, they are all the same controls. CMMC just split up one of the controls into three constituent parts in order to make it easier to understand. Now, of course, the teeth of CMMC is around protecting controlled and classified information. 
and the core level of that was CMMC level three, which contained all 109 controls of NIST 800-171, as well as an additional 20 to facilitate good cyber hygiene. Again, a lot of these controls were splits of NIST 800-171, as well as something we'll get into here in a bit. So now, CUI is gonna be managed level two advanced, and this is entirely aligned to NIST 800-171 and removes all CMMC unique controls from the certification. Gonna talk a bit about the certifications here in a minute. Finally, levels four and five, which were meant to protect against advanced persistent threats, were not really ever spelled out. Now, since CMMC 1.0, NIST 800 came out. Now, the DOD did a smart thing here, brought four and five together and put them in under expert level three, which has all controls of NIST 800 and some specified controls from NIST 800 See the video we did a while back about NIST 800 to understand why it's not the entirety of 800-172. So let's look at each of these levels and the main bullet points around it. So CMMC level one is for federal contract information only. It still has the 17 controls from CMMC 1.0. It is now a self-assessment that requires an annual recertification. So there is no longer a need to be concerned about having an assessment organization come in and see if it's performed. They're just going to take your word for it with an SSP. Now, CMMC level two is the one that's probably going to be the most important for our audience today. So it has all 110 controls, as I mentioned, of NIST 800-171, but it's split. And this is where the questions are gonna lie. So it's split between organizations that handle critical national security information and then others. It remains to be seen what is critical national security information, and that will probably be coming out with guidance as the DOD releases their documentation on CMC 2.0. Now, if you do have that critical national security information, you will be required to have a third party assessment every three years. However, if you aren't and you fall into that other category, that can be a self assessment. However, that self assessment needs to be completed every year. So it's that, again, the annual recertification. Now, CMMC level three is still being worked on. As I said, it encapsulates levels four and five from CMMC 1.0. It includes some controls from NIST 800-172 and will require a government-led assessment every three years. This will not be a third-party assessment. It will be done by the DOD, so probably DIBCAC. And again, no C-3PO's. So really where the impact to CMC 2.0 came from is where the assessment organizations were. Okay, so let's get down to the nutshells here. So first off, I'm sure we're all excited that there is a new time frame. That means that the DOD is gonna go through the rulemaking process, which can take anywhere from nine to 24 months, 36, 48, we know government timelines. So, we do not really have time to relax. We need to continue hardening our cybersecurity postures and really fighting back against advanced persistent threats and nation state actors. I can't say it enough. This is not a mandate, it's a mission. Please stop giving away our classified information. So, POAMs are back. However, POAMs must have a very specific and actionable timeline. They will probably be enforced on an annual basis. Not sure how that's gonna work yet. But the other thing is that there's going to be a subset of those 110 controls that cannot exist in a POAM that must be implemented before bidding on a federal contract. Next, we're looking at 110 controls. So, whoop, 61 controls went out the window. Not so fast. If you spent any time looking at the CMMC implementation guides or looking at NIST 800-171 SP2, you know that CMMC is laid out in a very easy to follow way. And a lot of the NIST 800-171 controls are broken out. Well, if you look at Appendix E of 800-171, what you're gonna find are NFO controls, non-federal organization. Most of these are drawn from NIST 853. 
And they include things that are just basic and simple. A lot of what is in CMMC that could be considered CMMC unique by the DOD actually fall into the 853 column of NFO controls. So as you're looking at NIST 800-171, again, we do want to wait for federal guidance to come out on this. Consider that Appendix E will probably be included in some way if or if not, it is actually assessed. So waivers. Waivers will be permitted for, not for a control, but for the entire CMMC program. Now, again, we're reading tea leaves, trying to see the future, but I expect that these this waiver clause is there for extremely time-sensitive, mission-critical capabilities. So if suddenly the Defense Department needs a capability and needs it right now and needs a contract, they're going to waive the entire CMMC program for that contract in order to quickly deploy these mission critical capabilities and over time will be allowed to come back into CMMC as the contract persists. Finally, self-assessments. I'm actually pretty happy about self-assessments. I always felt that CMMC 1.0, level one, this is getting complicated. I'm only gonna talk about CMMC2 from now on. But I always felt that the federal contract information side should be self-assessed and that there should be some sort of program on the DOD side to assist. Now there's Project Spectrum, which I will have a link to in the comments down below that helps organizations do this. However, beware of self-assessments because what's going to happen is if you decide that, oh, I can do that, and pencil whip your self-assessment and lie, and then something happens where you have an incident and you have to go back to the DOD and say, well, I didn't quite do that right. Well, now you've got the issue of the False Claims Act. Again, you want to check out our video on the history of the False Claims Act to understand why your biggest risk will be whistleblowers from inside your own organization and how they can make money by turning you in for lying on your self-assessment. So don't, please, please, just take it seriously. So there's a lot to unwrap around CMMC 2.0. I'm gonna have a, another video up here today around how CMMC 2.0 impacts Microsoft 365 commercial, GCC and GCC high. And as soon as the DOD comes out with new documentation around CMMC 2.0, I'll be here to help you with it. Thanks a lot. Give us a like and follow. If you do have any questions, as we all do, please ask them down in the comments down below. I love to be engaged with the audience. Thanks a lot. Hope this was useful.